I guess I maybe I I'm gonna go ahead and pick it. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Comfort. Thank you so much for being with me today. As you can see, today is challenge recap day. All right, we're gonna get right into it. We are recapping episode 11 of MTV's The Challenge, season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies. And y'all, episode 11 had, I mean, it, 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 it was eventful. It didn't have one of the teasers that we got in the mid-season trailer, but it kind of foreshadowed what would be happening in that so yeah it had some stupidity as far as one of the agents goes you know Kyle did his usual shenanigans but to his own detriment it had some heartwarming moments we got to really connect with a lot of the people's family and the reason that they're playing so I felt like um that was cute I also noticed something that I did want to bring up which I thought was a little bit interesting but yeah let's just get right into it go ahead and subscribe for more challenge content I also have a really uncomfortable series. We have done episode one. We're going to have episode two later this week where we tackle hot topics and any topics that plague the black and African community. We also have a challenge recap every single week. I'm also going to be doing a reaction to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion. Y'all, I'm just, I, I've been just waiting to do this reaction because I just want to see what they're giving my girl Garcelle because I'm not here for it. And I can just tell that I'm just going to be pissed off to be to be sincere to be very sincere I'm just I can't so go ahead and subscribe hit the post notification bell so you'll be notified every time that I post a new video all right let's get started so in this episode they get back into the house now if you do not remember what happened last episode like I always say go ahead and hit that playlist right there if you're just not caught up at all and you've been I don't know sleeping under a rock like it's, it is a panorama you have a little bit of time I would think go ahead and hit that playlist and if you didn't know what happened last week basically we ended up up having unfortunately Priscilla went home because the vets decided to help Ashley basically cheat in my opinion to win so Ashley and Priscilla went up against each other Priscilla chose Ashley to go up against after the agency voted Priscilla in and whoever gets voted in you know now we're in three different teams right so it was a female elimination day and whoever gets voted in gets to choose who their opponent is and Priscilla like the big dog she is mama chose Ashley who is a two-time champ you know it doesn't do too bad in eliminations hasn't won one in a while but she pulled she really pulled that one out and Ashley fully won honestly even if the vets didn't help her cheat Ashley probably would have won but it would have been closer it would have been like a legit win it wouldn't have been like I just I didn't like that at all like I know that they kind of helped here and there but I thought that they always did it subliminally to because it wasn't allowed but clearly it's allowed and I feel like that shouldn't be allowed like that was too much that was a bit much for me but whatever so now we are back Ashley's back in the in the house so everyone's back in the house so basically remember we have three teams right so there is team ruby which is Corey's team and Corey's team has big t logan emmy and kyle right so that is Corey's team which is team ruby cell i don't know why how it turned out to be Corey's team i guess because he got there first sapphire cell is ct nelson ed amanda ashley and bettina right so that is team sapphire or sapphire cell and then emerald cell is the couch casey not Johnny, Josh, basically the Big Brother Alliance, and Devin, and also Tori, and Emmanuel. Yeah, that is Team Emerald, okay, or the Emerald Cell. All right, so then uh, we're back in the house, and basically CT is talking about how you never know what can happen in the game. The fact that even if you decide to vote somebody down, you have to be careful who you vote down, because now the person that's voted in can choose their opponent, and they might bring you down, or they could bring somebody that, you know, obviously weaker than them, win and come back. And now, if you win the election, elimination you can decide to be on any of the teams and you can replace somebody so let's say if I want to be on team emerald who's like the winning team and even though they're the agency they're still up for grabs and you can take somebody off their team and put them on the team that you were just on so he's just talking about basically you got to be careful in the game like there's a lot at stake and you can really put yourself in a bad position if you don't make the right choice basically then we pan to Corey who I guess is the team captain for Ruby Cell and Corey is like you know looking around at team Ruby that a lot of these people don't even believe in themselves and you know Kyle plays too much he's not even taking it seriously that they're on the Ruby team so he's trying to figure out something that he could do to basically boost their team morale and make them actually work together and be a stronger team right so that's that's his master plan that he's concocted and Ashley is talking to Nani about her elimination win which is really weird because I mean I, obviously Ashley doesn't know this but 
Nani fully want Ashley, wanted Ashley to go home. So the fact that Ashley is talking to Nani and like pouring her heart out about, you know, she really wanted to, wants to call her mom and, you know, she's glad she could prove to her mom that she can do it. And she, she just wants to even prove it to herself that she could do it. And Nani's like, yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for that. That, you know, you didn't give up and, you know, you went in there and you did what you needed to do and all of that. And, you know, you took it really well. And I'm like, Nani, you not going, well, I mean, I guess, I guess it's not necessary to tell the girl, but she gonna let the girl just pour her heart out to you when you know you fully wanted her to go home. Like, I mean, it was, it, I wouldn't call it all the way fake because she did not say that she threw her in, but it was fake adjacent, but you know, whatever. We move. Okay, so what Nani said to Ashley was that she's really happy that Ashley chose to stay on Team Sapphire on her own team and not infiltrate and mess up anybody else's team. That she loves Team Emerald, obviously, because her and the couch are together and that's her lion. And she doesn't want anybody, she loves working with them. She doesn't want anybody to come and kind of mess up the flow that they have. Girl, I mean, y'all know I don't see it for most of the people on Team Emerald. So I don't really have a problem with Nani, but Nani's with the couch and I just, I don't see it for the couch. I don't trust the couch. I feel like the couch is a hater. That's probably why she's not gonna make it to the final again, but who knows. So then it's the next day and we pan to Corey who has put this plan together, right? So he has a boot camp that he put together for Team Ruby and he wants them to work as a team and to work through this boot camp and he feels like it's gonna have them get closer and bond and the whole thing, right? So he's doing this boot camp and Kyle's still playing. Everybody's not really doing that great at first, but they finally get into it and they are actually bonding. So he puts his boot camp together and so they do pretty well with the boot camp and they actually do kind of bond and are happy to be Team Ruby until, you know, allegedly, until they have to actually compete. But yeah, but it does seem to work to kind of boost their morale. I always forget Logan is also on Team Ruby. So Logan, um, if you all don't remember, last challenge on the daily challenge, he hurt his hamstring or pulled his hamstring or something. So it's not fully healed. So he wasn't able to, you know, participate in the boot camp, but he had some little sad sign. Y'all know I don't really see it for Logan anymore ever since he attempted me he played big t like used her for what he needed her for and then kind of you know tossed her away like you didn't know that in the beginning so i still don't really see it for logan i feel like the hamstring is you know until you do right by me everything you think about until you do right by big t everything that in your hamstring that is thinking about is gonna crumble and it's kind of messed up while team ruby is working out ct is basically making fun of them and saying like they don't have a chance like come on they don't have a chance and oh babies probably don't really have a chance but that was petty like come on ct you don't have to do it like that all right so that then we get to kind of the really heartwarming part of the episode where we go to through like kind of a series of different calls that everybody makes to their loved ones. So first we have Ed making a call to his mom and he says his mom is his number one. Obviously um, you would hope that your mom would be your number one. His mom is his number one fan. He's the one that she's, she's the one that he's playing for. You know, he said that she made a lot of financial sacrifices as a single mother for him and he really wants to win the money so that he can take some stress off of her and just kind of, you know, try to pay her back as best as he can for all the love and sacrifices that she made for him. So it's really sweet. Then we pan to Big T and Big T's talking to her older sister and um, her older sister is just like, you know, we're rooting for you, obviously. And Big T's like, people don't even know how much I really want to win. People really think that I'm weak in this game, but they don't realize that I have people at home that are depending on me to win. Sister is like, just remember that even if you don't win, that you have people at home that love you, that you're coming home to people that love and adore you, you know, like let that be, you know, in your mind always basically. And you know, she gets a little teary eyed and it's really, it's really, really sweet. And she's like, it feels good to know that she has people that are rooting her on and depending on her to win the game that feel like she could win, you know? So that's giving her the confidence that she needs. And they're like, great, y'all know I love Big T. So then we pan to Nelson and Nelson is also talking to his mom and basically saying that, you know, his mom, he wants to make her dreams come true and kind of win this money and take some stress off of her that he was a really, you know, hard headed kid and that he didn't listen and he used to get into a lot of trouble. And then now his mom is, you know, his biggest fan that he's kind of cleaned up his act and is doing something with himself. And so he really wants to win for her and, you know, help take care of her and all that, you know, all that good stuff that you would love to do for your mom, especially a mom that took care of you when you were hard headed and when you didn't have it all together you know it's really really sweet to see everybody and how they interact with their families and who they're playing for most people I feel like are playing for their families this is the thing that I wanted to say have y'all noticed 
I, I don't know if it's, I, I really don't know. I don't know if maybe because the last couple of seasons that CT has been back since after DM passed, he, his wife, him and his wife maybe had some issues or something, maybe that's why. But CT never calls like anybody. He never calls his wife, never calls his kid. I wonder if he just doesn't, he wants to keep them out, off of the show. Somebody had commented on, and somewhere on Instagram, I think, I don't know if it was on a podcast page or something, some challenge page. Somebody commented that he knows that CT's wife doesn't like it when he goes on the challenge and that they presume that it's because there are a lot of beautiful women around him and that I mean it was so random it was I don't know if she said something like that or I don't know child but I, that was just something that I observed that I was like hmm like CT has you know a wife and a kid like he how come he didn't you know that would be cute to see you know and we've already seen his wife they had the reality show leading up to their wedding and everything so it's not like we don't know who this is like it's not like she ain't been on TV before but I don't know I just observed that either way still team CT for now unless he he got three strikes like like everybody okay so he got he had one strike with that little amber comment and i checked him so hopefully he didn't do anything else and he didn't this episode he didn't he didn't and then i forgot to mention kyle also calls his pregnant girlfriend you know he has a baby on the way and she's six months pregnant and she shows him like the little ultrasound you know with the baby and everything and he's like it's that's amazing he can't believe it and he's like can't believe that he's gonna be a father and then they pan to basically amanda telling him that her mucus plug fell out and her water didn't break and it fell out and the to her mucus plug fell out in the toilet and he's like what mucus what can't you just plug it back like he's like I had no clue the pregnancy was that hard or delivery was that hard boy you didn't know like you're, you're about to be in for an awakening just be happy that you're on the challenge and not next to your pregnant girlfriend talking about you didn't know how hard pregnancy was like yes it's a journey it's a journey us that have done it more than once no so then we pan to Emmanuel randomly swimming and then he bites somebody's butt and I'm like you gotta be Tori and of course it's Tori so Emmanuel and Tori are fully in I don't know, flirtation ship, situation ship. There's a really funny part where he dresses up like a girl and twerks and he could, he was a twerk was twerking. He was really twerking. I know, you know, he said that he was a dancer. He's like a professional dancer or whatever. So it was kind of funny. And he said that, yeah, she's beautiful and she's smart and she's good at the game, but he likes most that she's weird like him basically. So they're having a nice little time canoodling to be expected. You know, that seems to be her type, girl. So now we are at the daily challenge, all right? So the daily challenge is called Satellite Sabotage. And basically what they have to do is that there is this platform with about nine long bars that they have to jump from. They have to jump to each bar so they get to the last bar. Then they have to jump off and pull a like a satellite rope cord thing. And once they pull it off, that is one. And they have about six that they need to pull off. And whatever team gets the most people to do that across or does it the fastest, if it's a tie, they win the daily challenge and they become the agency. All right. And also, the other teams that are watching them on the ground are going to be using a fire hose to basically try to ruin their game and get them off, to get them to fall off the one of the bars that they're trying to get to, that they're trying to use to get to the final bar. So y'all, this is a mess. Every, obviously, everybody's having a good old time trying to knock people off. So the first team that goes is Team Sapphire, right? Team Sapphire goes, remember, this is the team that CT is on. So this is CT, Nelson, Amanda, Ashley, um, and Ed, right? Y'all, these people cannot get it done. Like, they, the only person that gets it done is CT. Everybody, nobody else gets it done. Nobody else can do it. Like, they all, they're all falling off. They're all, like, they get close, but then they fall. I think Ed just, Ed just didn't do great at all. Ed got off immediately, and he felt like he would be on the chopping block because he's a rookie guy, and it's a guy elimination day. So he just didn't do well at all. Only CT made it across for Team Sapphire. So, and obviously Team Emerald and Team Ruby were having a good old time fire hosing them with water and trying to get them off, and so clearly that didn't help their game. Either. And y'all, so on this challenge, in addition to them being the agency, whoever wins also gets uh, a prize from P3, like a big prize, a big monetary prize from P3, right? So it's also like individual money in addition to whatever you win when you win the entire fight, right? So it's like extra. Remember back in the day when they used to have like each challenge you win money and then you stack your money up and then you add that to win your final your final pot. Yeah, so basically it's, it's kind of one of those. I was like, oh, nostalgia. Look at them winning stuff in between, you know? <laughs> So then we move to Team Ruby. Y'all remember Team Ruby is the underdog. Team Ruby is the team that nobody thinks is gonna win anything. So Team Ruby is, remember, is Corey, Big T, Kyle, and Logan, right? So it's like, and, and remember, Logan has a bad uh, hamstring or whatever. I don't understand how long this hamstring, the hamstring was pissing me off. I'm like, how long is the hamstring out for? Like, can the hamstring get back in? Are you medically fit, sir? Cause it's like, I don't know. 
But anyway, so they go, right? So Corey goes first, and he's like, I gotta set the tone, and da da da. And y'all, I really be giving Corey a lot of fight because initially, if anybody who used to, who've been watching for the past, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, I think Corey's been here for 10 years now. So, or not, he said nine, so the past nine seasons, you know, Corey looks like he's supposed to be a champion and then just loses every single time. Like in every iteration of the show, even when it's All Stars versus Champs, or like it just, just a mess. Or pros, was it pro, All Stars versus Pros or something like that? Stars versus pros, something like that. No, he, he still didn't. So, but recently in the last few seasons, he has been up to par somewhat, right? So I was like, oh Lord, Corey, don't talk a big game now. But he actually did really well. He did good and he made it to the end, right? So Corey made it across. Then who else goes? Y'all, Corey makes it across. Then Kyle goes. After Corey goes, Emmy is freaking out, right? And CT's not helping. He's making matters worse. He's trying to like deliberately fire hose her and like kind of psych her out. And, and she's having a meltdown. You know how Emmy does. Just over the top, extreme, extra. She doesn't like heights. Like, and the more they go higher, because they have to take them up, she's like freaking out, losing her mind. No, I'm about to die. Oh my god. Like, girl. Like, I understand you don't like heights. I mean, like, oh my god. Anyway, be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself, please. So then after Corey goes, Kyle goes. And Kyle gets across. You know, he doesn't like heights either, but he finally gets across. And what TJ specifically says is when you get to the end and you are about to pull the cord, you have to leap and pull the cord. You can't leap onto the bar and then pull the cord and drop. Like you have to take a leap of faith to pull it off. Kyle's ass gonna try to cheat the system. And instead of jumping and pulling, he's like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to take a leap of faith, TJ. And he jumps onto the bar and then pulls it and then still goes down anyway. You're still gonna go down. Like, so what was the point? I don't even want to say what the point of him doing that. But anyway, Kyle makes it across, right? Kyle makes it across and TJ doesn't say anything to him. So it's like, okay, we'll see. Y'all, then it's Big T. <sighs> and I really be wanting my girl Big T to like show up a show and every now and then she surprises people and I'm like yes girl yes prove them wrong but y'all this wasn't the one this wasn't the one where she surprised anybody this was the one where she did what people think that she's gonna do and it was just it was unfortunate it was highly unfortunate like she jumped I think it was the first one that she tried to jump to and slammed and just fell back it was it was it was just it was it was it was embarrassing I can't lie it was actually embarrassing but whatever <laughs> so then the next person to go is Logan right and remember Logan got that hamstring whatever but he does really really well and when it's time for him to pull it he does it the right way he pulls it across so right at this point team ruby is in the lead right because only ct got over for team sapphire and team ruby's in the lead because they got three people over right so now you know team emerald is like the team to beat and so depending on what they do team ruby could either win or you know we'll see so that y'all then team emerald go and team emerald is eating water basically right tori sucks she doesn't do good josh sucks he doesn't do good and man and Amanda says what everybody's thinking like oh my god please let them lose like uh yuck do not do not want them to win and I concur right so then they get to Casey and Casey's ass does good oh my god she actually did really good she does good in daily challenges so that's not shocking you know we'll see what that final talking about though and then Devin actually gets across which you know he proved that he's not just brains he's also a little a teensy bit of brawn oh and then they had their last person Emmanuel so Emmanuel goes actually and Emmanuel doesn't make it across Cross. Emmanuel eats water, y'all. He does not make it across, right? So basically, Team Ruby, it looks like Team Ruby is the winner, right? Because Team Ruby has three. They're celebrating, jumping up and down like, yes! Uh, you know, they were the underdog. They were the team everybody was laughing at. And Corey's like, I feel like a proud father. You know, I feel so good. Like, now we're the team to beat. I feel so great. Da -da -da -da, right? Y'all, they get in front of TJ, where TJ's supposed to graduate and tell them who the winner is. Then TJ gonna say, as expected, because of Kyle's mess. Like, oh, congratulations, you that guy, Team Ruby. You did great, but Kyle, and he's like, uh oh, uh oh. And TJ's like, because you didn't take the leap of faith that I told your ass to take, that everybody took, they could have took, because you ended up in the damn water. Anyway, yours doesn't count. So now you're actually tied with Team Emerald. And it depends now who did it the fastest. Guess who did it the fastest, y'all? Guess who did it the fastest, y'all? Team Emerald's ass did it the fastest. And they, once again, are the agency, aka Team Casey is the agent. Oh yeah, Nani's also on Team Emerald. I keep forgetting. She ate water too. She didn't do well. So they're the agency. Kyle's crying. Corey's crying. Emmy's crying. You know, like everybody's crying. Yo. It's just a mess. Obviously Kyle feels bad as he should because that was really stupid. He could have easily just jumped. TJ doesn't hesitate to let him know that. That hey, you could have just went like that was such a, a, a stupid move. And it was. Basically Kyle loses it for Team Ruby, honestly. And so then they get back to the house and you know, they're thinking about who's going to be thrown into elimination. And that's who 
to Team Emerald is kind of discussing. So I was thinking like, you know, obviously Kyle will probably be up and Kyle's feeling like even if they don't throw him into elimination like the agency, whoever goes down there can still probably choose him for elimination because you're allowed to choose whoever you want. And so he just is not feeling safe at all. So then CT, who is talking to Ed, um, who else is talking to? Nelson, is like basically, you know, we got to get it together. Like, you know, let's not get down. Let's, you know, keep our heads up. Like, everybody has a bad day. You know, tomorrow's another day. And Nelson's like, yeah, I definitely feel like we're going to get a dub another day. I don't know about all that. I mean, CT's on your team, so maybe, but, you know, Nelson stayed talking about he going to get a dub there and they don't get the dub. So Ed is like, he's feeling like it might be him that gets voted into elimination because he's a rookie guy. He feels like it's either going to be him or it's going to be Logan. Logan is like, he really hopes it's not him because his leg isn't fully healed. So he feels like he wouldn't really be ready for elimination. And so he hopes that it's not him. He's not sure who's going to be, y'all. So then they're talking to Kyle and Kyle's on the bed moping and they're like, okay, well, if you, you know, keep your head up. But if you end up going in, like, who would you, would you switch teams? And he's like, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I don't know about it. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. You remember he was talking about he wanted to switch Team Emerald, but Team Ruby actually did pretty good. So he might have to stay on Team Ruby. Who knows, right? So y'all, we get to the deliberation. Well, first, Kyle speaks up and says that, you know, he didn't really want to say anything about who's going to be thrown into elimination, but he wanted to apologize to his team, Team Ruby, because he knows, he feels like that he's the reason that they lost. And, you know, he really just wants to apologize to them. And he's dead serious when he does it too. So it was, it was like, you know, it seemed like a sincere moment. Corey says, you know, keep your head up. It's not your fault. Like we did our best. I was proud of us today. You know, we really came together as a team. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the way we perform. Ed decides to speak up and it's like, well, I know that I'm a rookie guy and it's probably between me and Logan. And then he says, y'all, such a sweetie pie po Ed. Ed gonna say, I don't want Logan to be thrown in because one, he did me a solid. You know, when Logan was the agency, Logan could have thrown Ed in, but he kept his word and did not throw Ed in. So he feels like he owes him one by throwing himself in. <sighs> not the smartest idea. And he says that he doesn't want Logan to go in because he feels like it wouldn't be fair because his leg isn't fully healed and he just, you know, he has a heart. He can't do that to the guy. I'm like, oh, like, uh, I understand he has integrity and he has a heart, but it's also like, it's a game, boo. Like, if he actually was like, and you're gonna do that for somebody you just met. You don't even know him. You just met. Now you gonna do that for somebody you don't know. Like, ugh, are you serious? Like, come on now. Y'all gonna, y'all not gonna be talking in the next three months? I doubt it. And it's like, girl, I'm sure you wouldn't understand Satan's sister, but I mean, I thought it was admirable what he did. Maybe not the smartest, but admirable, you know? So basically says that and Ed get, ends up getting what he wants and Ed is voted into the elimination by the agency. And so Ed goes into the elimination and y'all, so Logan goes up to Ed and he's like, first of all, thank you so much, you know? And Ed is like, you know, a problem. And Logan is basically trying to talk Ed through who he feels like would be the best choice for him to go up against an elimination. So he says that, you know, the, the options are the, you know, vet guys. And so the vet guys that are up for elimination is going to be Kyle, Corey, Nelson, CT. Obviously, he's not going to want to pick CT because it's like CT, come on. And he's like Optimus Prime CT, you know what I mean? So he's not going to want to pick CT. So Logan is like, he could either pick, he, should, he thinks like a, 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 the best decision for him would be Nelson because Nelson is around the same size, same weight as him. And he feels like whatever the elimination is, you could probably take him, right? And so then Kyle going to come up to Ed and be like, hey, if you don't put me in elimination, I'll never throw you in elimination ever. And Ed is like, I, I like I, I got to see what it is. You know, I got to see, like he doesn't promise him anything and Kyle is like you know come on you sure like you know basically trying to get him to promise him something Ed does not promise him he doesn't say anything like that so basically Ed is still kind of confused y'all so confused in fact they finally get to the elimination I'm talking about this is the most confused like no idea he gets to the elimination or he was just I guess just giving us the most awkward suspense ever so that so TJ calls Ed down as you've been voted into elimination right so Ed comes down like I didn't want to I said I didn't want to do that to Logan so I'm here I want to take my fate into my own hands, right? Cool. So then he's like, who would you like to come down here in elimination with you? Ed gonna say, well, I already said that I wasn't gonna pick Logan. I'm not gonna pick anybody from Team Sapphire, which is Nelson and CT. So basically the only people left are Corey and, oh, Team Sapphire is his own team. That's why he did. Cause I was like, why did he pick anybody Sapphire? Okay, cause they're, they're his own team. Okay, cool. So basically the person that was left, basically the people that were left is Corey and Kai. And in my head, I'm like, and Cor Corey over there talking big shit. If you want this smoke, you get it. If you want you get like, oh, ugh, please, just if Ka Corey would just hush sometimes, like just hush. So y'all, Ed gives us the longest. Oh my God, suspense. I don't know. I have no idea. They're both good guys. I, I don't. I don't feel like. I feel like Corey deserves to stay. So you know, Kyle's a good guy. I guess. Uh, maybe I, I'm gonna go ahead and pick Kyle. 
I get like, and it's like, sir, you you knew your ass wanted to pick Kyle. Why are you over here dragging this out? Like, and if you really didn't know, like, you gotta be quick on your feet. You gotta be quicker than that. Like, come on. <laughs> and mind you, everybody's like, why would you pick Kyle? Because they could see that the elimination is clearly pole wrestle. And I don't know if y'all know, I didn't realize this until they said it, that Kyle has never lost a pole wrestle. Kyle has even beat CT in a pole wrestle. Granted, it was two on one when he beat CT, but still, you know, Kyle has never lost a pole wrestle against anybody else either. So basically they're like, just pole ed is just, just did not play this very smart. So y'all, so basically the elimination challenge is pole wrestle. You have this pole, you have to wrestle this pole away from the person two out of three times. Whoever does that wins the elimination, right? Y'all, if y'all know pole wrestle, pole wrestle is always brutal. People picking each other up, throwing each other. The, 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 the image I have of pole wrestle is, I don't know if it was, I think this was like a, it was a, a different shape um, item. But remember when Derek, who was a mercenary who didn't even need to win, was killing himself and got Joss out just so he could have, I guess, bragging rights? It was like 9, 13, 15, 28 rounds or something stupid. Yeah, that's the image I have in my mind when I think I'll wrestle. So basically, y'all, they start going at it, right? And so Ed is like, you know, I'm strong. He's like, he's a big goofy guy. I can get him. I'm strong. I can get there, right? He's fully confident, right? And Kyle is like, well, I'm just going to wait it out. So Kyle's strategy is basically he's going to get the pole and he's just not going to let it go. He's not going to wrestle. He's not going to use his energy that he's basically just going to not let it go, right? Y'all, Ed is doing acrobatics. Ed is doing wrestling moves. Ed is picking, has picked Kyle up, has flipped him over. He's ended up on the floor. Ed is going in, right? He's doing the most. Everybody's like, he's going to tire him out. And sure enough, first round, Kyle wins. And he waits it out. I'm talking about Ed is trying his hardest at a lot of points. But you know when I always know that somebody is not going to get it? Once you take one hand off of it, you're probably not going to get it. Like, you need both hands on it at all times. So, so then, y'all, they go to the second round. And at this point, Ed is still like, it looks like he's going to get it. Like, he's yanking Kyle. He's throwing him, tossing him, flipping him, reversing him. <laughs> right? Y'all, but somehow, somehow, Kyle gets Ed pinned down. And Ed is basically holding the thing like this. And there's no way you can hold something like this for too long. And then, yank, Kyle gets it. And Kyle, just like that, wins another pole wrestle. So, apparently, he's the pole wrestle master. He does not lose a pole wrestle, child. So, y'all, all in all, Kyle wins another pole wrestle. Paul Ed gets sent home. Even TJ's like, well, you made a bad decision. So, then, y'all, it is down to Kyle deciding if he's going to stay on Team Ruby or he's going to infiltrate any other team, including the agency Team Emerald, right? Kyle going to say, <laughs> you know he's a clown. Kyle, Kyle going to say that his grandfather said on his deathbed that if you ever get the chance, follow CT to Team Sapphire. TJ cannot take it. TJ's laughing his ass off because Kyle's a clown, right? So, basically, Kyle has decided I'm going to Team Sapphire and that, sorry, Nelson, you're on Team Ruby and Nelson is his. So that's the foreshadowing that we saw for Nelson and Kyle to basically have whatever altercation that they had when they were all up in each other's face. Remember him and Corey thought it was a genius idea for them to be on separate teams. So he really wanted to, I guess Nelson just really wanted to be on the team with CT because he felt like he could win that way. So he's pissed off. He's on the team. Corey's all happy and hugging him and stuff. But Nelson is pissed. He's like, he's not having it. He's not happy at all. And then we see a preview of next episode and somehow, some way, Nelson gets in Kyle's face and Kyle don't back down, you know, it's a little bitty Nelson and it becomes a problem. And then y'all, it looks like Emmy basically talks to CT and says that he feels like, she feels like he's changed towards her and that he doesn't treat her the same, like, you know, like Uncle CT. And she has a meltdown basically about it. So I don't know what's happening there or what went on there, but more to come. Okay, so stay tuned for episode 12. I'll definitely be recapping that for you guys. Sorry, y'all have a cough drop in my mouth. Um, <clears throat> I'm going through it. I'm trying to work through a cold, but I really wanted to bring you guys this episode. So I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know your comments below. How do you feel about Kyle's choice? Do you think it was dumb of Ed to protect Logan and basically sacrifice himself for somebody that he didn't even know, like they said? Are y'all over Team Emerald? Like, I'm so, I'm so over them. Uh, like, let me know your comments below. And I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think is going to transpire between, or what's happening between CT and Emmy. Like, what's the B? What's the T? Go ahead and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the post notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post episode 12. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.